Hey Saddle Hunters, I've got a much anticipated review for you today. We are going to be looking at the Tethered Phantom. We're going to start off with a quick tabletop review and look at some of the features of it and then I'm going to take it out, put it in the tree and explain to you how I find best to run this saddle. I think you'll be thoroughly impressed the more you learn about the Tethered Phantom. Let's jump in here. Okay, so here's the Tethered Phantom laid out, and uh, I'm going to try to keep the tabletop review quick, but I want to point out just some of its major features to you. First off, the Phantom comes in a one-size-fits-all saddle, so I think they recommend it from anywhere waist sizes of 28 up to 40 inches. It weighs one pound, six ounces in the configuration you see here with the bridge attached from the end of... The bridge loop here to the end of the bridge loop at the other end, it is 36 inches long. The seat at its widest portion from here to here is 11 and a half inches. And then it tapers down to its narrowest on each end at six inches. You'll notice that it is um, a, a kind of a curved design, both on the top here and on the bottom. It's shaped like a football. Tethered says that that contributes to the comfort of the saddle. The body of it is made of a mesh material, and you can see that it's got a little bit of flex and, and stretch to it, so um, comfortable to, to sit down in. Two rows of molly webbing, both on the top and the bottom. They're stitched pretty flat, but uh, you can still get something behind them. And when you do, it sits very, very snug. So very secure Molly attachments on the saddle. The lineman loops on either edge are about three and a half inches on an inside diameter by about three and a half inches. So they're, they're very stiff. They stick out. They're right on the point of the saddle. Very well designed. The leg straps come straight off the bottom of the saddle have lots of length. Uh, I have chicken legs and there's just tons of slack. So I'll probably wind up cutting them off. They come though with these little elastic keepers for the extra. That's super, super nice. And then they use these tethered, I think they call them T-hooks where they just slip on and I'll show you where they attach on the front side of the saddle and then you cinch them down tight. But the leg straps work really, really well. Let me flip the saddle over and I'll show you some of its other features here. So, first thing you notice when we flip it over, the Phantom is made in the USA. That's always appreciated and nice to see. We like that. The waist belt is about a one inch webbing. It's got a lot of adjustment. They've thrown some tri-glides in here so that you can adjust the length of it on, on both sides. Um, over on this side, there's an elastic keeper. That's super nice. And then it uses, uh, mine has a, a green, I'm assuming this is some sort of anodization for the ADF Raptor buckle. And that, that works like that. Uh, very secure, not a lot of noise, especially when it gets any kind of light tension on it at all, it quiets right up. So I haven't even felt the need to, to quiet that down. I really like that waist buckle. The Hooks for the leg straps are on either end, very stiff. You can see the amount of stitching that they have, have used to reinforce that. And then the loops are right there. They're fluorescent orange, very easy to see even in low light conditions, pretty stiff. These then just hook in there like that and cinch down tight. On the Mantis, I had problems with that falling out, but, but there's uh, less wiggle room and, and they seem to stay very, very secure. So. Let me show you the two kind of most newest features, I guess, that, that Tethered has just released in conjunction with this Phantom saddle. The first is the Utila Bridge. It's an am steel construction with a full length berry, and I believe they're trying to get a patent on this design. Uh, they have a stopper knot at the other end. Let me make sure I get it in the frame there. Stopper knot at the other end. It's kind of Got some shrink tubing there to keep it in place. And then they use a Prusik knot to go to the other bridge loop. And you can just adjust the length by simply pulling it up and down the bridge. And you can cinch it all the way down to the other end, which I would recommend for your walk into the woods. And then when you get to, to hunting height uh, and go hook in, 
you can finalize however long you want it to be. At its longest most position, if you measure from loop to loop, that is 35 inches long for the bridge. So a lot of flexibility. I think that will work for pretty much everybody out there. And then coming around to the lineman loops here, you can get a good look at the comfort channel. So they basically buried four balls of some kind inside the bridge loop, which then create three independent channels. And you can see them, see them right there. And what that allows you to do is adjust the placement of the loop. And we'll go into this more once I get it on the tree, but you can change the position and ultimately the pressure that the saddle puts on you by moving the prusik loop into a different channel. So that's an excellent design and I found that it works really, really, really well. So that's kind of the tabletop review of the Tethered Phantom, just pointing out some of the features. I'm going to take you out into the yard now, put it in the tree, and kind of explain how I've found best to wear and use this saddle. What? Yeah? All saddle hunters wear Crocs. All right, this review is going to be of the Tethered Phantom. My wife just came outside and asked me about my choice of shoes, and I had to explain to her that it wouldn't be a saddle hunting video without a pair of Crocs. But anyway, uh, I'm going to show you guys just a few things that I like about the Tethered Phantom. I really enjoy this saddle. I find it to be an excellent balance of comfort and just, it's lightweight, it's streamlined. I love that I can strap it on, tighten the bridge down. It's got a low profile. I just hardly can feel like I'm wearing it. It's super lightweight, super comfortable. Let me show you a few things. First off, it has the adjustable utility bridge. You can bring that in uh, short or you can bring it longer. I tend to like longer bridges, so I run mine all the way back out. But all you gotta do is, is pull it and shorten it up, let some weight off. Once you've put some weight on it, I find it's helpful to kind of crack it open like that to be able to move it a little bit easier. But I run it all the way to the knot pretty much. The uh, comfort channels are super nice. I'm going to explain a little bit about those in a second, but there's basically three different positions that you can run the utility bridge in. Hopefully you can see those channels, but you at least can see them on the tabletop review, but you can move the loops from the bridge into those different channels and adjust the pressure points of the saddle as you sit into it. It's got super nice big lineman belt loops that are just in a natural spot. They're pretty far forward as you can see, so that's super nice when you're working your Ropeman 1 or your Kong duck or whatever you've got but this saddle's this saddle's comfortable it's got really long leg straps easy to let them in and out the hardware is not bulky at all which i really really like not a lot to have to worry about quieting down and no shangling around and stuff like that so anyway let me show you a little bit here as i've mentioned in some of my other videos i prefer to sit when i saddle hunt and i have found that when i sit in this saddle i like to have my my legs probably closer to 90 degrees and I run the middle channel of these in order to kind of have the most comfort it seems like it gives me the most even weight distribution oh one other thing I run this saddle probably just slightly below my actual belt line when I go to sit in it of course when I'm walking in I pull it up and, and tighten it a little bit so it doesn't flop around but as I get into the tree I, I kind of loosen it, slide it, so it's just below my typical belt level. Sit down into the thing like that. Like I said, make sure that I'm in the middle of the channels. I am, and uh, about 90 degrees. That's probably a little bit lower than I like it, so I'll raise this up just a little bit. Yeah, right, right probably about there is, uh, is where I'm gonna sit. Maybe even a little bit lower than that. Um, yeah, probably right there. I have found this to be comfortable in this saddle. I don't get any kind of hip pinch whatsoever. The pressure is pretty evenly distributed between the two, two straps. If anything, you know, the pressure varies so much. And this is what a lot of guys have to realize, that pressure is so dependent on, on a number of things. How the bridge impacts the bridge loops, the height of the tether, the, there's the length of the bridge itself, all of that stuff is going to affect your pressure points. And so you've got to be willing to 
play around a little bit. And my hope is that I can just give you guys some pointers about what's worked for me. But I find this to be kind of my go-to position in this saddle. I typically sit like this, and I've found it to be, you know, pretty much as comfortable as, as anything I've sat in. When I go to lean, though, I will make an adjustment. So if I were to lean, I typically bring in a little bit of the tether or the lead, run that a little bit shorter, and I'll move these into that first comfort channel. I like that because it brings a little bit more pressure on the, the top of the saddle as opposed to the bottom and uh, I just man that's that's so comfortable to lean in uh, I'm not much of a leaner I hunt in super high pressured areas and I don't like this big profile away from the tree but if I was in a big tree and pretty much knew that the deer were going to be on that side of me and I was hiding behind the tree I would have no qualms about leaning leaning like this whatsoever probably for even the whole hunt so this is super comfortable on that first one. I have it run the lowest one a whole lot. I find that when I'm sitting, like I said, that middle one works just good for me. So uh, that's that's how I do it. Uh, uh, this is, in my opinion, more comfortable than the Mantis. I don't find that I have as much fiddle factor. Uh, with the Mantis, I, I would loosen up the leg straps quite a bit. With this, I, I don't know, they hook up a little bit differently and I find that that they just don't run up as bad and so I, I like that about it. The Mantis also had those, I can't even remember what they called them, but you could kind of pull them and adjust the just the pocket or the cuffing on the saddle and those would slip out on me quite a bit. The leg hooks would, would slip out occasionally. I find, I think they use a little bit stiffer material where this hooks in and, and mine, aren't, mine aren't popping out so I, I like that about it. The ADF Raptor buckle is, is small and quiet. I typically run that just slightly loose when I'm in the tree, but but this is a high quality saddle. If you're looking for something that's streamlined and comfortable, or if you're, maybe you're even one of these guys who you don't, you're not gonna do all day sits, maybe four hours, five hours is gonna be your max. Of all the saddles on the market, this would be my suggestion. And, and you can do all day sits and it's got that much comfort and it's just perfect for guys that are quick running gun, like to be lightweight, streamlined, uh, tethered, hit it out of the park with, with this model. I've been excited to use it, anxious to get it in the tree this fall, run it a little bit. If you have any questions, post them below. I'll try to answer it, but I hope these videos are helpful for you guys that are just getting these things or you're thinking about a new model or unsure kind of how to run it for comfort. That's what I've, what I've found with this particular saddle, one of my favorites. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, good luck this fall.